<laughs> Eric Redding. I mean, isn't that the kind of voice I should be using with this music? I, I, I feel like I feel like maybe I'm an R and B announcer on the radio. Right? Yeah, I need to say I need to you know, Welcome. Back. You need to do that again. That Welcome. Intro. Do it all over again. You should make sure people hear that intro. <clears throat> I'm going to make sure everyone hears that intro. Are, sh are you going to share? Are, wait, hold on. So, hey, everybody. It's Erica Reddick here, generally irritable, joined this evening by my husband, Benjamin Nathaniel Reddick II. He is my research researcher. Mm -hmm. That's what we're calling him because, you know, all the news programs have a researcher. So, that's Benjamin's job. Yeah. Also, yeah. hype man. Yeah. He's all the way hot. Yeah. Comma, hype man. Also, music, uh, per, uh, what's the word? Like you yeah. buy music or you get curator. Uh, source music. Uh, uh, there's a different word I'm looking for that music I can't think archives. of right now. No, like where you, you're like a buyer, but there's a mm. fancier word for it. Like, Procure uh, music procurement. That's Beat the word I was looking for. Procurement, Beat procurement. Yeah. Okay. So why don't you share? Can you share a link to this nonsense? <laughs> in, in the, in... It's not nonsense, but I will do it. I so we it. are uh, opening this evening with a song by Dragon Ball Durag. Durag by Thunder. Durag. Oh, that's how you spell Durag? Durag? I don't know. Like, what? is that like Durag? Yes, yeah, like, like the Durag. Durag? Yeah. That's how you spell that? Oh, yeah, I need another one, by the way. My hair is getting. Put that on here. Where's this? Is the grocery list here? Durag. Yeah. This is how we're going to spell it. We're really going to get to the convention of states eventually in <laughs> politics, I swear <laughs> you guys. Uh, so, at right before we were about to go live, I was getting open Facebook. Uh, to get set up and to prepare for the live stream and I noticed that my husband Benjamin Nathaniel Red II posted a video called uh, Dragon Ball Durag by Thundercat official music video yeah hopefully he's gonna share a link to oh, it I did. oh you did it's in the live stream shared. you should share you should go watch it yeah I don't know can you guys hear it Can you guys hear that on the other side? Can you hear that on the other side? Because yeah. on the other side is relaxation. Oh, yeah. All right. All the days. What did you say? I'm covered in cat fur, but I smell he good. Said, he says I'm covered in cat fur, but I still smell good. Oh, yeah. Okay, we're moving on. <laughs> okay, we're really live here, people. This is me being serious. Okay, now we need to get back so we can answer yeah. questions. That was and me being serious. Will you navigate to the, to the yeah. thing for me? Oops, no, nope, that's no, not what no, I want to do. You want to do that? Do we have to open up another screen? Since it's open in this one? Yeah. No, no, Why no, is it scroll, silly? Scroll up. Focus. You scroll I'm up. Focused. Oh, I'm focused. Okay. Hey everybody, welcome back to Generally Irritable. We decided to go ahead and keep the Monday evening live streams going. Uh, it took last Monday off just to take a break, rest, and recoup. We're back in Texas. Mm -hmm. Is that where I'll see comments? Yeah, that's, the com that's the comments. Oh, yeah. let's see. It wouldn't be very effective if you had to navigate away from the screen to do this. Well, so. you know, I don't know. You know, look at how red I am. We gotta figure out the lighting in here. So this is what I'm not in my usual setup. Um, no, that's not good. Either. Yeah. That's terrible. Red Man, it is. I guess that's it. So not in my usual spot. We're in our place in Texas, and yes, we do live in a dojang. A bunch of people have asked me that in some of my other meetings. You see the um, all the the statues and trophies and stuff like that from uh daniel eastloss master daniel eastloss master eastloss Mas master eastloss his dojo is uh cougar or dojang to uh cougar taekwondo in in gerald texas yes i probably shouldn't tell people maybe maybe not who knows no, 
whatever. They know me, they know. Now they know. It's too late. You see that trophy in the background? See that big tall one that's like six feet tall? That's Benjamin's trophy. I went to the tournament. Victory was assured. Notice also all the weapons. So if anybody did try to come mess with us, because now they know her address, um, <laughs> you would regret it. <laughs> so we're just getting settled in, deciding, you know, what to do and what's next. And I am really excited to share with people that I, in this next phase of, uh, of Erica's development, have been invited to work with Convention of States in their development department and I am super excited because if I've talked to any of you about Convention of States you know that it's an organization that I really support and I have a ton of respect for the founders and the people in charge I went to the leadership summit last year uh, when was that August last year something like that and it was one of the most incredible experiences of my life. And I said to Benjamin back then, if I ever get a chance to work for them, I'm going to take it because it was just getting to be uh, at a conference with all of these people, men and women who were devoted to not just this country, not just their neighbors, but to the founding principles of this nation and and more to the point to uh, liberty and freedom and we talk a lot about liberty and freedom in our conversations i talk a lot about it on my live streams and in my content because i think it's one of the most important things that we can work to preserve if we hope to continue to live in a free society so convention of states is awesome everyone should go to conventionofstates.com and fill out the petition i'm talking to you not as a, an employee right now because i can't be uh talking to you as an employee right now i'm talking to you as erica reddick your uh former senate candidate i'm talking to you as erica reddick your neighbor vermonter texan we have dual citizenship in vermont and texas can you say that I think that is a thing since Texas technically is a country. Yeah, it probably is. We're just going to go with that. Yeah. So <clears throat> I have been volunteering for a convention of states for a, over a year, a little over a year. And what do, how do I want to start this conversation? You might want to talk about what. Convention what, of States what is, is Convention for, of States? You're like, Erica, to accomplish. what is this organization you're talking about? We've never even heard about it. Why am I not in half of the screen? I don't That's know. what I want to talk about. This is about me. Because yeah, I'm, I'm the star. I'm, yeah, we gotta, you're we're the we're hype man. The that means you're frame. supposed to be like... When Buster Rhymes was... Split Star was still there. He went like halfway off the screen. Yeah, yeah. he was. It's not true. Well then, uh, That's good. We're good. We're no, good. I'm mad now. The frame is balanced now. Nope. I'll, I'll go back so now you're in focus. Look at that. No nope. rock focusing with my body. Nope, it's too late. I'm not. So now you're in focus. Okay. Why does my skin look so terrible in this? Is that good talk? Well Next time we're going to have to have this States. fixed before we get started. Okay. I thought it was really funny. I got this super funny comment on one of my videos the other day. Mm -hmm. It said something like, Go away. You didn't get elected. <laughs> And I was like, oh, it's funny you think that was the point yeah, that's of all my videos. No, it is to help facilitate an engaged and informed electorate. So that is what I believe my purpose is here on Earth, and that is what I'm working towards. And so that's why, you know, I ran for office. It's why I come to you with these live streams and why we're presenting more information. Hopefully next week... Um, if I can get it together, it may not be next week, it may be the week after, depending on who I can get together. We're going to focus for a few weeks on the legalization of drugs. So now that it's passed, at, you know, it's decriminalized in Vermont, mm -hmm. they're setting up the legal, the um, marketplace for marijuana. Mm -hmm. And then in the light of the 
massive heroin epidemic that we're facing uh, with fentanyl being trafficked through our borders in Vermont to places like New York and Springfield, Mass. Um, and then also with the push to de um, like to take away the stigma of being arrested. Okay. So, you know, like trying to get people help. So I, Portugal, as an example, decriminalized all drugs and they have a program going on. Yeah. So I'm trying to find, I posted about it on Facebook. I'm trying to find experts in, in, a, in a few different fields. So if you know somebody, please feel free to direct message me and uh, or share my information with them. So I'm looking for folks who are libertarian and who can speak to the libertarian side, right? Because here we focus on liberty, freedom. Um, so what is the libertarian argument for legalizing drugs? What is the libertarian argument to say all of these things should be decriminalized and figuring that out? Yeah, I'm curious. I think the one I've heard quite often is that if I'm doing something and it doesn't directly affect you, then I should be able to do it. That's and what I've heard is the general. That's that's what I've heard too. The problem is that addiction never affects just the person using the drugs. Cool. So, so this is where. So this is why I want to see a libertarian who can argue with me hmm. that fact, or argue so with you can any have a spirited discussion. Exactly, exactly. And I and I don't mean argue as in like. You're wrong, but like yeah. I really just want to know what their what their basis is, what yeah. their argument is, what their justification is. Is that some lines of logic? Because the goal here with generally irritable is not just to be entertaining and and have a little fun and 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 make funny videos like the homeless landlord, but it's also to educate people so they can make informed decisions and engage with your legislators and tell them what you want and what you think and the questions that you want to have answered by their experts things like that so feel free everybody to uh ask a question throw throw something up in the comments there let us know if there's something you want us to address if there's something i say that you want me to clarify again the topic this evening is convention of states uh the organization we're going to talk about it we're going to talk about what it is why it's awesome and well interesting and actually was really kind of a stepping stone i shouldn't say a stepping stone but getting involved with convention of states was one of the things in my journey into conservatism that opened up a lot of doors for me and said okay well this is what you think about the way the process works in this country and how a republic works but here's some things that you need to go read about, okay? So when you talk about amending the Constitution as an example, you go, oh my God, amending the Constitution. Like, what's the first thing you think when I say amending the Constitution? You guys out there listening, type when I, the, what's the first thing you think when I say I want to amend the Constitution? Like, what's the first thing you think? What's the first thing you think, Benjamin? Congress. Okay, Congress. That's the first thing I think. Okay. Difficult Congress. Does it make you nervous at all? Does it make you think, what the I heck? Mean, if, I, if I give it some thought, yes, because you're going to change something that's foundational. Mm -hmm. So, depending on what you're talking about, yes, there can be reason for concern. But, I mean, if I, if I didn't know you, yes, I'd be far more concerned <laughs> than... <laughs> Are you saying I have some some credibility yeah. because of because of my influence on you? Yes. Yes. Okay. So because Benjamin tells me what to do. <laughs> yes. That's how this works. That's how this works. Yeah. That's what. Did you guys know? Oh, I won't go there. <laughs> um, you know. Not just, on this one. We're just gonna have a sip of water. Keep this one clean on this one. We'll go touch those topics later. Yes. I have a very wonderful husband. I was talking to my new boss today, Patty, and I said, I have the best husband in the whole wide world. And and she kind of made a face. And I was like, Mark <laughs> might be okay. <laughs> I'm just saying, Benjamin's the best. <laughs> but anyway, so 
a lot of you guys know, any, but in, um, my followers know, I'm very much about the Constitution. I call myself a constitutional conservative or a small government conservative. And so when I learned about the Convention of States, they're calling for an Article 5 convention. And what that is, a lot of people know that or have heard of constitutional conventions. So normally when you hear about amending the Constitution, whether it was, you know, the 19th Amendment that gave the women, uh, gave women the right to vote, that was this year, the 100th year anniversary, or black people, or, uh, you know, any of the other amendments that we've had over the years, um, have gone through as, constitu as a constitutional convention. And what that is, is when the when Congress decides to work together and do a constitutional amendment. Got it. Okay. So that's, you know, <clears throat> we know that you need to have two thirds. Wait, is it two thirds? Three quarters. Three quarters of the of Congress has to agree in order to amend the Constitution. Now, the framers knowing that there was a good chance the federal government was going to take too much power and encroach on states' rights, yes. they put a kind of release valve in the Constitution that said if the federal government gets too big for its britches <laughs> so that we don't have to have a revolutionary war, right? So keeping in mind, some of, a lot of this stuff was written in the shadow of the Revolutionary War. So what they said was, the federal government can get too big for its britches. Human beings tend towards tyranny. We always do. It's just taken 250 years here, but whatever. Yeah. So we need to make sure that there is a way for the people to take their power back. And so in the Constitution was written an Article 5 convention. So state legislatures can actually call to amend the Constitution. So instead of waiting for the federal government to do it, instead of waiting for Congress to do it, our state legislatures can get together and decide to make changes to the Constitution. Um, so Diana's saying, side note, I just found out my vote did not count as I checked with the SOS and I'm suddenly mysteriously not listed. I, I am not surprised um, and we can totally talk about that at some point if you want to send me a private message. I do want to focus a little bit uh, our conversation and topics on Convention of States. So you should know though, reach out to Deb Billadu, the state party chair, because I know that the state party was asking for people to report any voting anomalies. Um, also, you're not the only person. I was getting the Secretary of State's list of people when they, the ballots returned so that we could target people that hadn't voted yet with our messaging. And I would say a minimum of 10% of returned ballots were rejected. Um, I haven't looked at the final tallies or anything like that. We only got them through the last the Friday before election day was the last day we got them. So I wouldn't have updated information, but at least 10% were rejected for not being in the right envelope, not having a signature and stuff like that. So, uh, really big bummer. So convention of states, where was I? Article five convention, states the taking states can, back their- the states can do when the government is, the federal government is acting tyrannical. Being wild. 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 Yeah. Okay. So, now the thing about an article five convention is that you have to have, each state has to pass an application for the article five convention. And it has to be the exact same application in every state. So you've heard about like, uh, oh, what the heck was it? The Equality Act or some, no, not the Equality Act. There's some e equal rights amendment or something that they tried to pass as like, as an article five convention, but it failed. It didn't, it only passed, it didn't pass all the states and it had a time limit on it. So the time 
elapsed and now they're trying to pick up the mantle again so they're that um, there's one out there for just term limits just term limits and that's like termlimits.com or something like that. I don't remember what it's called. So there have been some attempts at Article 5 conventions. Now you can imagine the difficulty of trying to pass the exact same application in 50 states. Well, actually, you don't have to pass it in 50 states. You have to pass it in 34 states. Wait, no, that's not right. I'm going to fail my job right off the bat. Yes, it's also term Yeah, it is 34 states. Yeah, okay. It's termlimits.com. It is termlimits.com. Don't go there, though. Go to conventionofstates.com. Well, I mean, you can't go there. Go to both. Do both, for sure. So it takes 34 states to call the convention, but it takes 38 states to ratify any new constitutional amendments. So it's just like Congress, two-thirds to call, three-quarters to pass. So that's interesting. Um, now, what constitutional amendments is Convention of States calling for? I know. I've been leaving you on the hook. I've been making you wait for it. I've been reeling you in to find out. Should I tell them? Maybe you should tell them. Should I tell them? You haven't earned it, but we should tell them. I should tell them. Okay. So, the three conversations or the three areas that Convention of States is calling for constitutional amendments, um, the three items listed in the application are limit the power and jurisdiction of the federal government, impose fiscal restraints, and um, and add term limits for federal, place term limits on federal officials. So no more congressmen being there in Washington for 20, 30, 40, 50 years. What is it, Lay? He's been there for like 47 years now. He's... 217 years old. Wow. I know. I'm sorry. I'm being rude. But Big Shang song. It really is. Like, why Why is what Nancy Pelosi's in her 80s? Dianne Feinstein's late 70s at least. Why are these people still in Congress this many years later? People like them. Why? What do you think is the danger of being in Congress that long? The main thing that what you what you end up having is a circumstance where there's no impetus or reason to change the status quo or to be responsible or to do things differently so you have people like as an example diane feinstein who's been in congress for 1400 years her husband was given the contract to sell a bunch of u.s postal service locations so her family personally made millions and millions of dollars off the sale of that property. So why is that okay? You know, when you have things like, this is one of the things that I always think is really funny as a really good illustration. When we have federal officials who go in, they make laws that help themselves and help their friends and all that kind of stuff to give them funding, to give them whatever it is that they need. So you have, you'll have people, I totally lost my train of thought. I was gonna give you a good one. A good reason why? Yeah. So they go in, they create help Laws their, to help their buddies yeah, help and their all buddies. that kind of stuff. Crap, I was gonna out, give you a great example. Oh, well that's definitely part of it. So like you have congressmen who will help pass laws that are beneficial to the chemical companies and then they go and get jobs working as the CEO for Monsanto or something like that, making a bajillion zillion dollars. Hmm. Oh, this is what I was going to say. So as an example, everybody's talking about canceling student debt now, right? This is a hot topic. Hmm. How much have you heard about canceling student debt in a lot? Right. Everybody's talking. All the all the Democrats are talking about it. That that was like a major platform for yeah. Bernie Sanders, a lot of Elizabeth have, Warren. Their student debt, and they are thinking it's going to be good for it to be canceled. Yes, and so and actually, how many of the Democratic candidates were senators, or in Congress, or of something like that when they passed the Affordable Care Act? I know where you're going with this. A lot of them, like most of them. 
So what many people don't realize, this is what's amazing. This is gonna give you an example of not just why term limits are important, but why the uh, size and scope or the power and jurisdiction of the federal government is a problem. So back in the day, uh, during Obama's uh, presidency, when they worked on the Affordable Care Act, Congress decided that they were going, in order to pay for the Affordable Care Act, one of the ways they were gonna pay for it was to nationalize student loans. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, that is correct. In case you didn't know, the reason why, especially Vermonters, the reason why Nelnet owns your student loan now instead of VSAC is because the federal government nationalized student loans. That means the federal government closed an industry and took it over, okay? So you now, unless you live in, I think the one state is Wisconsin. No, is it Wisconsin or Montana? It's one of the countries out west that's uh, smaller in population. Wyoming? I have no idea. I, I'll ha I have to look it up. Somebody look it up. Don't, I can't remember exactly which state it was. But basically, there's only one state left in the union that has a student loan, a, a bank that is allowed to loan student loans. And it's in that one of those states. And the law is written that says, basically, you can't have a student loan bank unless it's at least 200 years old or something. So they wrote mm -hmm. the law because that one senator said, well, I'll sign it, but only if we get to keep our student loan bank. And I'm not articulating the words correctly, but that's what it was. So this guy signed it and said, okay, I'll go along with it, but we get to keep our bank. So it says, it's literally written like that. Basically all, all lenders, unless they're 200 years old or whatever the number is, is, are closed and we've nationalized this. And the reason they did that was so they could use the interest earned from the student loan debt to pay for the subsidies for the Affordable Care Act. Also, those school, I saw a document that said that the uh, average tuition had increased by 12% in that four, that, in that block of time or something. Oh, like that's that. interesting. In the following four years alone, student loan debt or student tuition spiked another 12%. Because they had, I get, apparently they made the, uh, the getting of these loans easier Yes. So yes. So no issue. longer are loans based on merit or ability to repay when people get out of school. It's just backed by the federal government. And so anything that's backed by the federal government is yeah. just wasn't there another situation where the government backed something and then the industries took advantage of it? What was that? Was that housing? <laughs> wasn't it the housing thing where, wasn't that what the... This is almost like, which one was he going to name here? Wasn't that the here? one they were talking yes. about where they were backing the loans oh, and guaranteeing them yes. so, they, so the company sort of bad writing debts. bad debt, knowing it would be covered by... Subprime mortgages. By Big Daddy, and... by Big Daddy government with I the black we card. Can, wait, can wow. you thank Obama for that one too? I know, I think that was a joint, the book I read, book I read said it was a, it was a lot of different factors. Mm, the Clinton administration Clinton did, did deregulate a lot of stuff in the banking there industry. Was, there was something specific they passed that uh, was to help people get into home ownership, but the, it facilitated people manipulate the system as the thing is like, yeah. Well, and that's why it's not just that it's predatory lending on the part of the federal government. Yeah. Not only in supporting that kind of home loan program, but yeah. in, but also in the federal student loans, like you should not, I'm sorry, if you want to be an English major, that's great. You should do that, but you should do it on your own dime. Not, you should not be graduating with a hundred thousand dollars in student loan debt with an English degree that you're maybe going to make fifty thousand dollars a year as a copywriter or an English professor. Like, no, no the can. American, no, Amer the American you people. You gotta go live at home for like two years. No, that's what I said. You can do that, but the American people are not paying for it. Oh, okay. They these should not. They, there should be no student. If if a loan is going to be given out, it should be a private loan. Mm. that you personally have subsidized 
and will pay back or you declare bankruptcy or whatever. The federal government, mm. AKA you and I, should not be uh, co-signing the We're loans the loan. for uh, dance theory. Yeah, I do think there's an issue with that. And if, especially if it, when it's something that we're not saying we need, and it's not something we, as the American people uh, need. Is, is there a demand for this yeah, degree? Like, are, are there, so this is the thing, is this is why I say this is predatory lending. So the student loan industry, to me, like I'm not surprised that we have a generation of people who are mad, who want their stuff forgiven. Oh, we're totally off topic here. Yeah, we're good. We're good. We're but good. actually, we're not. No, we're not off topic because we're talking about predatory lending from the federal government. This is actually what I'm talking about. So power and jurisdiction of the federal government, limiting the power and jurisdiction of the federal government is one of the COS uh, application items that we're calling for. And so that would include, you don't get to give out loans with our money yeah. to people who have no ability to repay them. I do think that people don't understand that the government doesn't have money. They have Good point. our money. So every time you add a program, you add a, a, a new agency or whatever, that's them spending our money Your on money. a new thing My that money. may or may not be something we actually need and then worse than even that if you ever if you've ever been involved in federal government in many different ways they are not efficient trash often with the money and so what trash. ends up happening is that you're giving someone money that they did not have to go out and fight for and earn so you're giving a kid a credit card yes and so it doesn't matter if they're well intentioned it's still somebody with a credit card that's doing what they think is right, and they're not not—they're not doing what is in your best interest fiscally. And that is often what you see in federal expenditures. And that's why I'm a small <clears throat> government conservative. So how many times have you heard things like, oh, well, if we don't spend the money, we won't get it in our exactly. budget next year. Many times. So wait a second. So you didn't need all of the money that you asked for. So they're giving it back to us. The people you borrowed it from. And being reasonable, you're spending it all so mm -hmm. that you can justify asking for more next year. Yeah. And so therefore it just keeps growing and growing and growing yeah. at infinitum with no reason yeah. to rein it in. And now we're back to the term limits conversation. And more importantly, you've established a precedent and principle where people mm -hmm. think that that kind of activity in the federal government is okay. See, most of us look at the first order, I guess the first order effects of, well, this is what's going to happen if I do this. We don't look down the line at there's somebody watching me in the way that I'm moving. Yep. And they may not be as altruistic as I am. They may not be as competent as I am. They may not have the, the best of intentions like you do, but they're going to do the exact same thing. They're going to use the exact same argument. And there's a plethora of applications to what we're talking about right now across the entire strata of civilization, but we're going to keep it focused on just this one. So when you set a bad precedent about we don't need to balance our budget because we're doing what's right. Okay, so what do you think happens when the next guy comes in? He thinks he's doing what's right. There's also, no principle to hold. Well, to. and also who said who's just who's to decide what you think is right is right. That is also correct. Maybe right for you, exactly. maybe right for now, maybe right for this season, but every every program mm -hmm. should be measured and reassessed Monitored. on a regular basis. Monitored constantly for efficacy. And for fraud. Yeah. Because this here's here's the thing that I that I find interesting, and you just touched upon this, is this idea that human beings are inherently good and decent. And I don't understand what human beings that people who believe that have been around their whole life. I, I mean, in all sincerity, this is, I'm asking like the Burlington City Council, uh, some of our current legislators, it's who are like, oh, we're, we wanna, we wanna decriminalize the sex trade. And it's like, do you believe that everything that everyone does is good and just? What, like, literally, what planet have you been living on? Have you never been victimized? Here's, here's have you never been a victimizer? Here's the other part is like, are, do you think that criminals, when they hear stuff like that, don't 
smell the opportunity. Figure out how to take advantage. Yeah, like you, you're seeing it in our society right now where people see that certain individuals are okay with certain activities and so they go and engage full tilt knowing full well there are no repercussions. Yep. They're not, I mean, I'm not, I don't even want to, we're not even trying to go down the route, but I'm just, but that's, we're like, that's getting, the point. but that's the, that's the thing. Well, and that's the thing is that's when the government has this much control over your life mm -hmm. and this much say in what you can and cannot do. Yeah. When that, when you can simultaneously have <clears throat> the state legislature trying to ban weapons, ban guns and things like that, while the city and town people are then trying to defund the police so okay so you don't want me to defend myself and you don't want me and you're not going to provide me a defense that seems like that would impede uh life right to property, life liberty liberty property the pursuit of happiness liberty right so yeah i mean not life well, yeah, like, and liberty. That's true. I mean, the Second no Amendment to protect, is to protect no all to, of the others. No way to protect my personal property. Literally, y'all, the Second Amendment yeah. is there to protect all of the other amendments. In case you don't know that, I don't. How else do you protect your life, your liberty? Cops. You're supposed to protect those with cops that are going to show up after you've been. It, maybe murdered raped or robbed that's the and other then, thing then they, so that's that's how you protect you call the cops after the people who have already broken in and oh. being you unconscious and then that's how they and protect then you. right because yeah. then we're not dealing with more victims of society no that's when the protection kicks in right there. oh okay so then but then we though that creates victims of society which we yeah. then have to forgive we for are, however they act correct as a result of their victim well first of all we have to catch them right and so here's the deal so you need to you have to it has to happen okay then, then you you get justice by calling the cops and then they're going to do like a csi level investigation okay. you ever see that yeah like forensics like yeah the, the machine and it's going to spin and do all the 3d yeah. micro bay shots and tell stuff. them about it though. yeah it's going to be just like that um and then that's a lie that's not what happens you've ever been robbed as, as i've been robbed no one does that they take serial, no numbers. They take serial numbers down. Their little powder and, dust and no, fingerprints. There's no dust. It, the laser it, blue light UV, that shine around the that. room to see no, things. The dude shows up with a notepad, right? They're not. They're not dusting for prints. Like it was You're a saying, very, Hey, sorry, it was a sucker. Disheart, it was legitimately disheartening really, experience the first yeah, time. Yeah, it really. I was like, wow, we're just really gonna. Yeah. I was like, where's Horatio at? Where is it? Where, where are the glasses? Yeah, where is that guy? Where is that yeah, guy? Doing? You did, yeah, you did it right. But you have to do it's two parts. Hold on, there's two parts to it. No, no, let me show you. I just watched this. It's like you, you say like, um, um, I can't believe that there was a robbery of the house. And he would say, you don't believe it. But this just got real. <laughs> he exits. He exits every time. Yeah. Yeah. I need to have a saying like that that I do. We need that. We need that in our life. Okay. Yeah, they don't want you to protect your property because they don't even want you to have private property. <laughs> that, is a, that is a very good point. Yeah, they get Mr. Buccaneer, sir. Yeah, I'm thinking of trying to get rid of cars in some some place. They don't want you to have private cars. Like it's all public transportation. Well, I mean, they. I mean, Burlington is doing that, and there's like Amazing. Austin has a lot of those car share programs and stuff like that. Ooh, that's rough, man. Yeah, I don't think that's gonna fly in Texas. I don't think. I think that's. But no, I do. I do. It is interesting how many people do not seem to believe that private property. Um, it's like they think that all the things that we own and that that are ours come from the government or are granted to us as a privilege. Um, like they're like their father, and we're still in daddy's house, mm. and we're not. That's not what. That's not what this is. Yeah. So. That's um. I, I want to go back to convention of states. Yeah, convention of states. We're talking about student loan debts and um, government. So. Territory. Limiting fiscal, or excuse me, uh, imposing fiscal restraint is one of them. Yes. Um, it doesn't specific. So one of the things you guys. The applications all say limit the power and jurisdiction of the federal government, impose fiscal restraints, and place 
term limits on federal officials. Every yes. application in every state has to have the same exact verbiage. And um, so people will ask me, well, what exactly are the, um, what exactly are the amendments that you guys are gonna propose? And it's like, well, we can't say exactly what the amendments are that we want to oppose. That's for the people who go to the convention to decide. So each state chooses its own delegates mm -hmm. and they choose how they want to choose their delegates. So if anybody's interested, um, shoot me a direct message and I can email you some documents to review. I can send you a link to Convention of States and to some other uh, resources that they have publicly available to learn more. Yeah. But um, so each state gets to choose its own delegates and each state hat produces its own mechanism for choosing delegates. So you could have one state where, like Texas, say, as an example, they maybe they would want to have one delegate from each re region of the state. So Northeast, West, South, Central, right. right? So they would send five delegates. Or a state like Montana that doesn't have a huge population may just send one delegate. You can choose. But in the end, each state only gets one vote. So you can send however many delegates you want, okay? But each state in the end still only gets one vote. And you need 38 states to agree on the amendments to ratify them. Actually put them into the Constitution. So... I never even knew that was a possibility. Yeah, so they have to go to the convention to decide exactly what the amendments will be so like as an example i would love to see an amendment relating to debt spending so i don't know if you ever pay attention to this benjamin but a lot of people may remember all the conversations about raising the debt limit do you remember, I remember hearing, hearing this okay that. so you'll hear it sometimes in the news of course nothing else is happening in the world except for covid and um, the presidential um, impeachment, like that's all that we've been talking about the last four years. But what we didn't talk about a lot was the omnibus bill that President Trump signed for last year's budget. This was before COVID hit. So you may like Donald Trump for a lot of reasons. I like Donald Trump for a lot of reasons. I was super duper mad when I saw their budget come out. And this is not related to the COVID stuff. It was the largest budget ever passed and it was like three or four trillion dollars or something. It was some nonsense. So they just decide that they're just gonna take out loans for stuff. And who do they take out loans from? Do you know, Benjamin, who they take out loans from? I have a guess. Let's start with a C. It does! It's China! So they own something like two thirds of our debt. I don't know how that is a good idea. It's not! It's a terrible idea. See, this is, this is, I mean, the, the book says uh, the uh, debtor becomes slave to the lender. Mm. And if you've ever, I have a principle about this. If you ever owed someone money? Yeah. Like, you talk to them different when you owe them money. Yes. Like, the relationship changes. Yes. And that is always in the back pocket that they can pull out on. Yeah, what about that money, though? Like, I've seen people who are friends have that conversation. So imagine people who don't necessarily like each other you owe them cash and you're talking fly i don't think that's a good combination not so much not only that but they're you know the human rights so it's not even like mm -hmm. it's not even like the buddy that it's not even like you borrowed money from your buddy who's it's just homeboy. a jerk yep. okay you we borrowed money from our our creepy uncle the loan shark who might also be making inappropriate films so you can go over there and tell them, hey, man, you should stop doing that stuff. Like, hey, man, you should pay me my money. Yeah. So <laughs> when we're talking about a country with the human rights oh, atrocities man. and the human rights record that China has, you know, the, uh, the oh, let's see, killing of all the baby girls, Oof. infanticide. I hadn't heard anybody talk about that in a while. In a while, right? Why aren't the feminists really angry about that? Because they like, go fight China. Because they're that. too busy looking for sec the like one sexist in America. So they have to work so hard to find the one guy that's still a sexist here in America that they cannot focus on the actual murder of baby girls 
uh, forcibly by the Chinese government. We can't be bothered with that. That is. We can't be bothered with the uh, Uyghur Muslims who are in slave camps and who are used for slave labor. Uh, we, you know, we can't. We can't talk about that. We can get back we, hey, China, do you want? Can we buy? Can you? Can we sell more of our debt to you? Uh, anyway, so I digress. But that's the point. This is this is again limiting the power and jurisdiction of the federal government. So the fact that our federal government has the ability to go into debt with a country on our behalf. Yeah. So they go into debt on our behalf with a country that treats people like trash. And now we are in a position to have to defend ourselves financially, economically, and possibly uh, physically. Militarily. I mean, we... Well, I mean, didn't, didn't they just... Uh, isn't Hong Kong pretty much... They've already... They, yeah. Hong Kong is basically no more. It is no longer a free state the uh they have officially started you know imprisoning all their well wow, wasn't the u.n supposed to be like britain you uk i'm just i'm not i, mean, I know but we gotta try to talk i know to but did, don't you know i'm asking you a serious question wasn't the u.n supposed to do something like that about what i could have swore there was something i read that was talking about the way that that deal was positioned where like britain or somebody was supposed to ensure Oh, well, no, China, like that. well, that was the whole thing that was stupid about it. China gave its word that it would leave them alone. And everyone Weird. should have known better that that was not going to happen. They didn't. They, that, they did not so keep their strange. word with, with uh, England. And so there has been some talk about whether or not England would use any sort of military action since okay. so there's like let weird me, let me answer the question the on answer that is one. no no and i don't i don't know about the u.n no that would be interesting but i mean we is it england part of the deal and that's what i mean i thought i thought well, this was the they're point probably of, trying to sanction them or something because of it are they, they the trying UN. to sanction them i don't know sure. that somebody let us See, know it's weird when you have a lot of money um, and mm -hmm. you're willing to fight people. Oh, How? and you just give stuff away. It's weird. Oh, well, that's right. And think about this. It's weird. You, you talk about building a country off of slave labor. China is literally building, you know, internet and stuff like that in all these other countries using slave labor. Everything that they've done all of their, I shouldn't say all because I don't know well enough, but you know, their manufacturing uses child slave labor, the Uyghur Muslims, um, and they just put people in work camps because they don't care. Where are the people in China, aren't there people in China fighting for their $15 an hour? Where are those people at? I haven't seen <laughs> a lot of them on the news. What? Uh, no? I need to get out of the camera. Are they not? I think it's a perfectly valid question. It's a very hot topic, though, I just figured. With all the workers they have over there, somebody would be fighting for a livable wage in China. I thought. All right. That's good. So, but isn't it funny how, like, almost every conversation that we've had, we've been able to turn it back around to limiting the power and jurisdiction of the federal government Imposing trying. fiscal restraints and placing term limits. Because really. all these things relate to the fact that the government is. Trying. How many? Uh, <laughs> so many problems. Stop hitting the desk. You're shaking oh, the camera. So many problems that we're facing are because of the government. They are like a result well, of the federal wait, government. So let me give you. Here's here's how here's how I look at situations like this. So you have a brother, right? And you two are competing in some game. I don't care what game it is. And your dad comes in and helps your brother win. How would you feel about that? I'd be pretty mad. Now, you'd be mad if you lost anyways, but at least if your brother just beats you or sister beats you straight up. Fair and square. And straight and a fair a fair one. And then you, you'll take that L and you'll continue on down your day and hopefully you'll learn a lesson from that. But if like your parents are stepping in like they they pay for your cop they pay for your mm. brother's tuition, but they didn't pay for yours. Mm. 
So, so instance, how about this? So for instance, we talk about like eradicating debt and like student loans yep. and stuff. Um, Dan Crenshaw had a really interesting one. He was talking about that, but the the gist of his of his uh, the, the quote they attributed him is that so you're gonna make people like Ben, right, who dropped out of college because it was not gonna pay me what I wanted to pay me. I could I could tell by looking at my curriculum. Um, dropped out of college until I could figure out what would make the most sense for me to make these decisions to make them make sense for me financially. Uh, until I could pay for it myself, really is what happened. Um, and I suffered through that, not having the advantage of a degree, but also not having the debt, right? Um, you want me to pay for people who have bachelor's degrees and master's in fields that they maybe should have been sharp enough to not uh, engage in because they couldn't make the money back because they made a bad business decision because mm -hmm. all of life is a series of business decisions for the record. It's all, it's, it's a gamble. It's, it's odds, it's, it's, you know, cost, return, the, all of life is, just for the record. Uh, so I'm supposed to, 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 to pay for the people who quite honestly might be my direct competition yes. in how I make a living. Yes. I don't know how that's fair. And it's, and, and it's not, and it just, it's not, it's not fair. And that's the thing is they're not concerned with fairness. So a lot of times people are not concerned with fairness. Hmm. They're concerned with outcomes. Well, that's not a good outcome. But that puts it, them in front of me. I, 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 well, I mean, according to you, but according to them, getting a college degree puts them on par with you. Don't, I'm not, it's, it's a joke. I'm you're okay. not supposed to get it. Okay. Good, That's good, because I was, I was like, really I really struggling really, here. really trying to no, like, argue with okay. me, and yeah. I had to, yeah, it was a joke. Hmm. I don't think that's the logic in that one. I think the logic in that one for them is that, ooh, with the predatory lending and all that stuff was unfair that's to them. That's for real. And it's fine, but again, the result of you making an adjustment like the one you're talking about is that you will leapfrog these people ahead of me. Yes. So they made an investment, and it didn't work out well. Yes. And so now... Right, so just like any other business person, well, but here's the thing. Yeah. A normal business person, if they've taken out a loan and invested in a business or a future or something like that, they can discharge the debt via bankruptcy. They have that mm -hmm. option. They have that opportunity. Correct. You can't do that with a student loan. That is correct. You cannot ever, ever, ever do that. And so here, I, I said something that I want to just make sure I correct before we go on. So... When I say that I understand the why people are angry and um, that, you know, student loans, predatory lending, blah, 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 right? Okay. So I say that, and I, and I mean it legitimately. I think that the fact that we are giving out student loans is predatory lending. It really, really, really is. It is irresponsible on, on the part of the federal government and one of the ways that we can do away with this, the way that we can protect young people is by imposing term limits um, on federal officials so that they don't have the impetus to keep a lot of these programs going and continuously funding them to the level that they are. Um, now, again, you see tuition going up for student, for colleges, that's because it's, subsidized by the federal government and they can now charge whatever they want because the exactly. federal government is going to give somebody a loan for it. College is not supposed okay. to be as expensive as it is. So imposing fiscal restraints so that the federal government can just give, not only just give our money away to pay for, for schooling for people, mm -hmm. but to take loans from China yeah, that's ridiculous. to pay for somebody to go get their English degree <laughs> that they're never going to be able oops. That they're never going to be able to pay, repay. It's not my fault. We're There's sitting at the dumb killing desk. Me, killing me. So, no, but that's that is good. That's why I remember hearing Ron, Ron Paul talks tracks. a while ago, and he was talking. They asked him about, well, how will people pay for college? He said, you pay for it the way you pay for it in any before. You save money, and you go to school. And if we didn't have, if the federal government wasn't propping it up, college wouldn't cost as much. It would have to be more efficient or they go out of business or we change the way we do college. Ooh. So right now, COVID, one of the beauties of COVID that people should have realized is how much of the facilities we're offering aren't required. And then even how many people, some people are doing better 
Oh, good point. With homeschooling and, and distance learning than they did in school. So hold on. I didn't get to finish my right. thought because I went on a little bit of a tangent. So mm -hmm. I said the thing about predatory lending. The thing mm -hmm. I also, what comes up a lot is uh, personal responsibility. Okay. So yes, um, the federal loans are predatory. Absolutely. And I think it's wrong. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, yeah. where were these kids' parents? Exactly. What kind of parent encourages their child to be saddled with $100,000 worth of debt for a gender studies degree? Why would you let your kid do that? Oh, they want to be free to express well, no, no, themselves no, no, or whatever. It's not that you encourage them probably to do it. I can tell you it probably happened. They wanted to do it. And they have free reign to do whatever they want to, right? You might have told them not to. They did it anyways, mm. right? And so there wasn't a tremendous amount, I'm assuming, a lot of these parents could to, to control I think they what could these have. people were doing. I don't, I mean, no, because I didn't, I didn't need my mother's permission to get a Yeah, but on. that's not, you know, you may not have, but that doesn't mean that's not what these kids are doing. No. What I'm saying is, I'm sure that has happened sometimes. You don't think? I don't think no. Any most parent of our, most of our, go no, to their kid no, and say to them, "No, most hey of our parents, kid, that degree you want is gonna is not gonna get you a job. Yeah. You're not gonna make enough money to no, pay off your No, no, no. You miss it. You miss what I'm saying. I'm certain that's happened quite often. People do what they want to do. It's not the parents' fault. The kids. These aren't kids. First of all, you're voting. If you made a bad financial decision, you're not a child. You're 18, you're probably in the streets, partying, yeah, drinking. Somebody... Nope, nope. You're in the streets, party, partying, drinking, driving a car, having sex. You were acting like an adult. You made an adult decision, and it was a trash one, and it didn't work out for you. And we've all done that. That doesn't make you a bad person, but that's what you did. So we keep talking about these people like these are 17-year-olds and 16-year-olds. These are 18, 20, 22-year-old people in college and this is the decision that they made that's true and that's so that's actually the point really of what i what i was trying to get after with that but you're right is how many of our laws and how much federal spending is done as a result of trying to shield people oh, yeah. from their mistakes a lot how much student loans federal loans uh, different social programs, welfare, you know, and I'm not saying like I, you know, I grew up poor. I've been the beneficiary of some of these programs, so I'm not mm -hmm. saying that they're all bad. Yeah, but mostly is how they're implemented. But how? But thing. even that, the times that I've had to use it, even when I was a kid, it was because of not good decision making. Exactly. And I, I, you know, you people are going to, if anybody says, you know, <laughs> they're going to talk to my mom and be like, you're terrible. But like, seriously, we didn't have to be in Section 8 housing. We could have lived with my grandparents in Burlington. We didn't have to be in Section 8 housing in St. Albans. We could have lived with my grandparents in Burlington. But there was a program out there that gave my mom the opportunity to pay for her bills. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure that that was better. I'm not sure that having our own apartment in St. Albans was a bit with people abusing their children next door to us, a drug dealer across the street and all of that would have been was a better option than my mom having to suffer living with my grandparents because she didn't like them very much. Um, and I'm speaking in shorthand. No, he was a he wasn't a drug dealer. He was a pre he was a pre-legislation oh pharmaceutical so, representative, even talking local to you. pharmaceutical So, but that's my point, is that was a decision that was made. My yeah. grandparent, my parents decided to get divorced. So the Section 8 housing was to support people gotcha. not supporting their families. Well, the th Do you know what I mean? Like the time that I got, I had help after I got out of prison was because I was in prison. Like, like the, the social programs are there to help shield people from suffering the consequences of their decisions. Not all people on social welfare programs have made bad decisions. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying a lot of them are to shield people yeah. from making well, here's the from thing. their bad decisions. You, I don't think that you should shield people from the damage of a bad decision. People have to face the, the, some of the, the you got to face some of the consequences. And then if you are going to give someone a program 
to help them elevate out of that situation it needs to be with the wherewithal that this is your fault right mm -hmm. there's some aspect of the game you didn't play correctly it isn't that just society is unfair even if it, it is unfair but that's not the reason that you a mr a b or c started dealing coke and j damaging up your, your neighborhood um you chose to do that there were probably some other opportunities out there that you didn't engage in so now that you've done that, we've got this work release program to get you back on your feet. But you have to admit, you have to come to the realization you jammed something up and now you've got to go about repairing and fixing that thing. And that's the way that that is often the impetus for people to change their life and make different decisions. I talk about that all the time. Yeah. Getting in trouble was the reason it was the impetus for me to start going in a different direction and looking for help. Mm -hmm. And so I had help for a little while to get on my feet. I got back on my yeah. feet. I was even taking care of family at, after that. And if we didn't have, as an example, if the federal government and the state government were not taxing us so much, we're not taxing us so much and we're not borrowing from places like China and UAE mm -hmm. and all of these places <clears throat> to pay for stuff, there wouldn't be the opportunity for so much fraud. There wouldn't be a continued growth of the bureaucracy, yeah. you know, because this is the other thing. You need to answer something. Oh, oh. Um, it's about votes. Let's see, Robert says it's about votes. Buccaneer says that's where so many people confuse pursuit of happiness with guarantee of happiness. Ooh, good point. Well, that uh, movie was not called Guarantee of Happiness, by the way. It was called Pursuit of Happiness. <laughs> for a reason. And he suffered through the entire movie, and that's what made the movie good. When you don't suffer, and there's no journey, and there's no growth, and you don't learn anything, which are all the elements that make a good movie, or all the elements that make a good life. What we like to see in movies Facts. is life. Facts. Why do we keep trying to... You know what happens when you you know what happens when you take uh, the struggle out of a movie? You get I don't know Captain Marvel. You get uh, hap what is the other movie that came out that's just like that? There's a couple of movies. I think the new Mulan is very similar to that. Oh, you take all yeah, the yeah, struggle yeah. out of a movie. It's not a good yeah, movie. Yeah, there's anymore. no character development. They just None. are the same person the whole time, and they just become amazing. What yeah. is that called? A Mary Sue? It's part of it, yeah. And so when it's... The, when there's no character development, just, and they they're don't... just the best, and they're just awesome the whole time. Oh, Star Wars. You don't even see... Uh, there's a whole lot. Mary, yeah, Star Wars. I'm not even going to go there, but the point is, people want to see that hustle. Part of... The, Part of what inspires well, people like, to get involved with you and, and to want to get behind you is the fact that they know that you are willing to bleed for whatever it is you are pursuing. And if you haven't learned that, what are you passing on to the next generation? When you have people who come under you, how do you mentor them if you've just been handed everything? What do you have to teach? It's, it's, it's not good. And there's, there are ramifications and there are second and third order effects to all these things that we're talking about. Yes. Oh, here's a COVID. I had something really important to say and you totally interrupted I'll Give me. you a minute. No, so he says, yeah, afraid. this COVID home learning may yet be inadvertently the public school system's undoing. Yeah, because if I, mean, if I can teach my kids at home, wait, is it? it's almost as if there's all of this information and some people actually don't learn better sitting behind a desk and the information is easily accessible without spending hundreds and thousands of dollars on new textbooks and new editions because if it was digital they would just update when they had to it's weird hmm. it's so strange how all these things would make schooling cost effective and we're learning all that but you know we why we see? can't do that why is that because salaries we have an unelected fourth branch of government <laughs> <laughs> and as far as the school books go, we're talking about the Department of Education. Yeah. So this and is people why... making money off of those books. They're selling those copies. Oh my God. So this is the thing, you guys. So here's, here's, here's where the problem lies. Okay, well, there's a lot of problems, but here's a problem. Yeah. So like when we talk about the power and jurisdiction of the federal government, when we talk about uh, imposing... Um, Lim uh, fiscal restraints, th we're talking, so as an example, 
we, the Department of Education, Federal Department of Education. Sounds like a good idea, sounds like it's important, seems like we should do that, make sure everybody has some education, right? Because we had some problems back in the day, right? right. Like, and I'm sure we still have problems. Yes. yes. But, so the idea of it sounds good. We wanna to try to make sure everything is equitable. We wanna make sure that uh, lower income places have the money that they need and all that stuff. The problem is, that all the money that's set aside for the Department of Education, as an example, and I don't have the exact numbers and I should look into this, but you'll find this with every administration or administrative department, is the De Department of Education is set up to do all this great stuff, but the majority of the money that goes to that unelected bureaucracy is for salaries, it's for office space. It's for their desks and the paper that they use. It's for pens. It's it's those budgets that we have to spend all of the money uh, so that we can get the same budget and justify our budget for next year. It seems weird. So, do, you do you think any of these people might have a relationship with any of these companies that make any of these products? It would be weird if Simon & Schuster, for instance, like support any political campaigns or anything. I'm not saying they are. I really don't know. That's a legitimate. No, but that, but question. that is no. That is legitimately. That was what we touched upon a little bit earlier, where you had people who were in charge of the FDA, as an example, who then later went on to work for Monsanto for multi-million dollar contracts. That's not unheard of. Like those are. That's in like movies and documentaries illegal. that it you can find. It should be. But the beautiful thing is, I mean, Congress. The only people can make it illegal. Are, are is Congress, <laughs> and guess why they won't? Because they have no reason to. It is a racket. It's so good. And they can keep putting their own oh. homeboys in there, over and homegirls in there, because there's no term limits. I can't even. Well done, slow clap. This is good. They exempt the limits, themselves the from the laws that they, they pass it. for us. That is my favorite. They get to have health insurance that forever be, at infinitum. Uh, uh, convention of nope. should add that if if Congress no. if so if so for if if forthwith Congress passes another law dealing no. with health care or money, they should be forced to no. Let me finish. They should be forced to have to live by some of those laws are passing. So if we get certain kinds of health care, you yeah. don't get special health care. Nope. You, you get, get you get the bronze plan from Blue Cross Blue Shield. Boom. The high deductible, All of it. whatever. And so, oh, by the way, once you're not a congressperson anymore, over. done. This this retirement after what eight years? No, no, no. All that. Bernie trouble. Sanders, y'all. Bernie Sanders, now a millionaire, who talks about taking money from the little people, the still gets a pension. The billionaire. He's, he's a millionaire. He's a He doesn't say millionaires because he's a millionaire. So right now it's the billionaires. Billionaires and trillionaires. He still gets a pension from the city of Burlington. Wow. Really? Why does that fool still get a pension from us no, he's not a fool. 40 years later? He's not, he's not a fool. That is a man who is getting knows that there is a there is a paycheck in the mail that he doesn't probably need. And instead of donating to his his state, which is cash strapped, instead of doing that in city. At, instead of acting like a real public servant, right? Don't serving come. serving Vermont. Instead, he collects his check and moves along with his with his day. This is so, a weird choice. So Donald Trump, the terrible dreg of a human being, supposedly. Did I use that word right? Dreg. Dreg is dregs. dregs of success. Dregs. Dregs. Dregs of success. So is a dress is there singular? I have to look it up. Is it a know. singular? I have to look it up. We, we tell tell us in the comments section. Is that a singular word? Um donates every one of his presidential paychecks. He hasn't taken a single dollar for being president of the United States. Do you think... Never mind, I'm not going to go there. I'm digressing Dreads again. the remnants of a liquid left in a, in, a, in a container together with any sediment or grounds, coffee dregs, or the most worthless part or parts of something. So dregs would be singular. Yeah, and plural. Yeah, I think a drag works. So, okay. So, federal government. 
fourth branch. So that's what, when you guys, if you hear people, if you hear political pundits talking, or you may hear me talk about the unelected fourth branch of government. So you have the executive branch of the federal government, which is the president. Mm -hmm. You have the legislative branch, which is Congress. And then you have judicial, which is the Supreme Court. And then there's, you know, more parts underneath that, like, and then how they relate to one another and how they work together. But the point is that, so there's three branches of government, legislative, executive, judicial. So they say there's a fourth branch, an unelected fourth branch of government, and that's the bureaucratic department. So you have the Department of Education, mm -hmm. the FDA, mm -hmm. um, the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency. We're not saying, and when I say I don't think that these agencies should exist, when I, when you hear other politicians say that these places, that these bureaucracies shouldn't exist, we're not saying we think that you should be able to dump toxic waste into the river. We hate Mother Earth and we should burn tires. Everyone should burn tires in their backyard, okay? It's not what we're saying. You like that one? That's a good one. The burning tires. Yes, yeah, very unhealthy. It's really nasty. Burning the tires is nasty. Bad decision. Remember, what was that chemical plant that caught fire near here a couple of years ago? I have no idea what you're talking about. It was about. nasty. Anyway, I digress. What were we talking about? I don't even know. Unelected fourth branch yeah, of government. Know, yeah. uh, le the legislature is supposed to be making the laws, you guys. Correct. Okay, they're the ones who are supposed to decide what the rules are. They're yeah. the ones that are supposed to decide how they're followed and the yeah. parameters. And what they do is they obfuscate their responsibility mm -hmm. to either their staffers or lobbyists to write the laws, yeah. right? Because they're you know that uh, those guys, they're not writing that stuff themselves. No, no, no. Let's be real. Chuck Schumer... Are you kidding me? The guy can't hardly tell a sentence without reading it off of a piece of paper like this. There's no way he's writing legal prose for anything. Anyway, I'm digressing again. I do want to say we, um, we're talking about obfuscating. Um, mm -hmm. That also happens with the state to the federal government, which is half the problems we're having right now. Because yeah. once anyone gets power, they don't give it back. Uh, so one of the things I think is very interesting is that like we're talking about schools. Why should you need a federal board of education? Your state should be able to fund your schools. And in addition to that, um, you should be setting the parameters of what success and lack of success look like. What should happen is that if, you're, <laughs> if your kids are uneducated compared to kids coming from another place, that should become very apparent. Your children will be discriminated against, and it should cause you to fix your schooling. This is a, a competition. Texas should want to have better students in South Carolina and Arkansas in California. This should be competitive. Vermont should want that. Vermont should want that as well. And right now, we spend the most per pupil in the country and are not even in the top 10 as far as outcomes. Oh, that's rough. So does anybody feel the pain from that or is it like, oh, it's no, they just keep taking, taking, taking our money to pay for stuff. And it's all going to the special education stuff. So every kid is getting their own. I, I'm speaking really flippantly and I should be careful about it because it's not like it's going to special education funding to like kids who actually need the help and have learning disabilities and could use people like. Anybody listening, if you have a kid with like dyslexia or some kind of learning disabilities, even if you've gotten it tested by the school, call Kingfisher Learning, call Melissa King at Kingfisher Learning and have her do a report and a test for you. Even if the school has already done a report, they actually have some kind of responsibility if you want a um, second opinion yes and so if you call kingfisher learning melissa king at kingfisher learning and i'm sorry i don't have her number handy right now but i know she's got a fancy new website uh she's amazing and i love the work that she does every time i hear about what she's working on i literally start to cry because it's just she's doing such good work for kids that really need help 
So I would be fine if every one of our special education dollars was going to somebody like a Melissa King, who was in there with the kids, teaching them, getting their hands dirty, and 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 helping them learn. Uh, 802-557-0697, Kingfisher Learning, the phone number is 802-557-0697. Tell them, tell, tell her Erica Reddick, generally irritable, sent you. Um, thank you, Dion, uh, for, and, and Thelma for signing up for my YouTube channel. I love it. Did you see the homeless landlord? Um. <laughs> You like air horn. Wham, wham, wham. Wham, wham, wham. Wait, can we get like a, can I get like a, uh, you know? Yeah. Like a, I'm sure you need a soundboard. Yeah. Isn't there those things you can program yeah. sound effects into it? I just realized it's 815 already. <laughs> um, yes, Dion, uh, term limits for sure. Absolutely. I, I just don't even know why it's a question. And this... Let me ask you guys this as we start to wrap up. I'll be talking about Convention of States some more. Feel free to ask me questions. Go to conventionofstates.com, read more, sign the petition. Uh, um, I know there is a grassroots army building in Vermont who support Convention of States, and they have a framework even to help take back our legislature. Uh, to really engage people, you know, I think there are so many disenfranchised conservatives, you know, small C conservatives in the state of Vermont, whether you're a Republican or Libertarian, conservative, whatever it is, the fracturing of the party um, because of all the rhinos in charge has has been devastating. And if we can all find a cause that we can get behind, that we can unify around, that will help us take back our state and help us take back the nation. Um, I think that's really important. So anybody who wants to learn more about Convention of States, reach out to me. Uh. <laughs> Have I said how much I love my husband? Yeah, on this podcast. Um, oh, best documentary ever. Thank you, Robert. My mockumentary. <laughs> people keep asking me when the next episode is going to be. Um, I need people who have houses or something that butts off uh, up onto private property that we can post up on <laughs> and, Take the show and get, get the show going. Oh, um, it might be spring before we do another one. Good luck if we didn't figure this out in California. Oh my god. Lawless. Oh my god. Well Calvary that's gross. we've yeah, it is. We've also I've thought about parking it out in front of certain public officials' houses. <laughs> Maybe I can get away with that now that I'm not a candidate anymore. But when I was a candidate, I was like, yeah, I probably oh, shouldn't do that. I am um, to talk about that. I also don't think it's cool. I, like I I say that I was gonna do it and go on people's yards, but like I actually think the, some protesters had gone to like Mira Weinberger's house and stuff like that. And, and here's the deal. As much as I do not like Mayor Weinberger, as much as I vehemently disagree with every policy that he has and probably every decision he's ever made as the mayor, and yeah. I'm sure I'm speaking hyperbolically and I don't care, as much as I dislike him as a human, as, as a mayor, he may be a fine human being. I don't know. You never know. He may be. I just think he's a terrible mayor. It doesn't matter how much I dislike him, I guess is my point, which yeah. I think I demonstrated well. I think you did. Uh, I think you got the point. To, to, put, to be in a position where you could be um, interfering with his family's ability to be okay, because like he has a wife and kids, and yeah, I so. wouldn't want to do something that made his wife and kids feel unsafe. And the protesters did that, and I thought that was really jacked up. So There's I've been hesitant to park my homeless landlord shelter yeah, on I mean, a public official's property. So if you can find me somebody who's single, maybe I just put it like right in front of their job. Doesn't have kids. Right in front of their job. Oh, on a place, a place right, of business. Right oh, in the middle, in the midst of. Yeah. Oh, oh, you mean make it difficult for them to do their job? Get this dance. You about to lose your job. Oh. Has anybody, have you guys seen the You About to Lose Your Job <laughs> dance and song? 
<laughs> we need to get, I need to start learning how to use OBS or Streamlabs oh, or whatever so I can share my screen. So coming up in the next few weeks, in the next month or so, uh, I'm going to be stepping up my game a little bit. We're going to be using like OBS or whatever, right? Yeah. Streamlabs. I'm on the so I can and we'll polish cross the in the razzle dazzle some things mm -hmm. for you guys to see. Wait, what is it gonna be like? And we'll polish a little razzle dazzle. Razzle dazzle. What's that from? <laughs> oh my <laughs> god, you guys! I just had a flashback to a Scooby Doo episode with the Harlem Globetrotters. Oh. <laughs> razzle dazzle. <laughs> Don't. I know what episode you're talking about, but I. <laughs> I don't know what. <laughs> I don't remember that. Part. Oh, we're gonna have to look that up. Yeah, we're gonna have to. How can oh, they look up the you about to lose your job? Uh, Should we post that in there too? I uh, will find it, but <laughs> Should we share that? There's so Maybe much we ridiculous share that. stuff I would watch. Um Internet is a treasure trove. If you search you about to lose your job, does it come up? What it what was I I was gonna wrap up with something. Uh, how do I contact you? I see your campaign contact is still that the same. Yes, that is a great way to contact me. Um, also, anybody that's interested in running for office in the next couple of years, holler at me. We are putting together a group of folks to help uh, cultivate and groom candidates for the next couple of election cycles. So, you know, it's going to be hard to be as wonderful on camera as me. But we can certainly, we're, you know, the plan is to help coach people how to be on camera, um, how to, you know, do public speaking, get their campaign stuff together so they can be working on it well ahead of time and have a strategy. So definitely reach out, go to conventionofstates.com, sign the petition, check it out, read more, holler at me. Yeah, I think you can direct message me here as well on Facebook. Um, but you can also still, my campaign website is still live. I'm not going to lie, I haven't updated it since before election day. Have we? We've been, we've been talking about revamping it to do something else, mm -hmm. but it's been undecided. But you can still reach out there. You can still sign up uh, to be on the newsletter, which that's also going to be rolling out in the next couple uh, months. We're actually going to take everybody's information and create a newsletter. Because there really is a movement of patriots in the state of Vermont mm. um, who've been motivated and activated by our campaign. And that was really... Um, Heartening? Yeah. The opposite of disheartening. It was the whole point. It was actually really, really amazing. I'm going to cry. Okay, I'm going to... Um, no, really, like, I mean, this is, you know, this is my purpose, you guys. My purpose is engaged in an informed electorate. It's what I'm here for on this earth. And so to know that our message resonated with people and help people feel like they had the courage to stand yeah. up for themselves and to stand up um, for their family and yeah. what they believe. It just was really awesome. Yeah, and especially in this world of, as we talked about this before, bullies. I detest bullies of all sorts. I did even what you're talking about, Mayor Weinberger. Uh, going to his house knowing that he isn't going to come out and fight you makes you a coward. You threaten someone knowing they're not going to fight you, you're a bully. But you're a bully. But you're bullying mm -hmm. people. When people, whatever side they're on, are mm -hmm. walking around punching people in the head from the back. We don't see them coming, you're a bully. We hate all forms of bullying. It's not okay. It's really not okay. Telling people that they're not black if they don't vote a certain way. Telling people, like, yeah. what was it? You're, you're not black if you vote for Trump, yeah. and our roommate is not Cuban if he doesn't vote for Trump. No. Wait, wait, you yeah. said that? No, you're not black if you vote for Trump. He's not Cuban if he, he does vote, vote for Trump. Trump. Does not vote for Trump. Right, exactly. And Correct. so it's just like, you, you yeah. don't get to... Apparently blackness is determined by your political party. Here's the thing. Now, the one I, I saw that, the one I I saw that was him. the best, my best, the best example. Um, I won't use the word they use. It's a very derogatory term for black people that black people use a lot. Uh, starts with a C, right? Mm. Um, you're only that word, your blackness is only called into question if you don't 
if you're voting wrong, you're dating the wrong skin color person, uh, you're listening to the wrong music, uh, you're not into things that everybody else of your color typically is into. Um, never mind the fact that your color and your original culture aren't really all the, they're not necessarily the same because they do different things in Africa, but that's a different conversation. Um, oh, you mean not all black people are from Africa? Correct. But the, here, oh. the whole, the whole, here, the, the part that's fun to me is that if you're dealing drugs, if you're shooting people, mm -hmm. if you're a gangster, half the people in gangster rap um, talk about all these things, their blackness is never questioned. If I go out and I murder someone in the streets because I'm real, my blackness isn't questioned. I can kill one of my brothers, my black brothers. Blackness never questioned. That is tremendously confusing to me. That sounds like, you guessed it, bullying. And this is why I resist these things. This is why I'm often called and feel I want to troll people. I want to say things I don't even believe in sometimes just to shock the system and show them that I don't care. I have an urge. I really have to resist. That's one of the urges I have to resist because people, I'm like, you think you're going to tell me what I can and can't do? Watch me show you how that's not going to happen. Watch me. And so that's... Catch the stance. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a problem. It's a problem. It is a tremendous problem. Um, but we're seeing it on all sides. And this is what we saw in Vermont. Most people are somewhere in a reasonable range of the center, left or right. Most mm -hmm. of us believe that you should have a right to your personal property, that people shouldn't be able to just show up and take your property from you, no matter what reason they, they, they think that they have. Because that is how you get to anarchy, when people think they can just take stuff because they feel like it, which is not what we're supposed to be in right now. Um, uh, these are things that we're watching happen, and people don't feel like they had a right to speak out about it. Most people aren't super right or left. They're somewhere in the middle. But we've been taught during this Trump-Biden, the Black Lives Matter, all the stuff, that you can't be in the reasonable range. You have to be extreme. And there's everything wrong with that. Extreme anything is a problem. And that illustrates really well what's wrong with the power and jurisdiction of the federal government. <clears throat> Notice, did you see that? That was a nice, that was a nice. States? Did you see that? It was beautiful. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, we're not supposed to care, you guys. We're not supposed to care this much about the federal government. We're not supposed oh, to care yeah. this much about who the president is. I didn't even know where that came from. Yeah. We're not supposed <laughs> to care. We're just not supposed to care this much, you guys. And the only way that we can restore the balance mm -hmm. of power between the states and the federal government is to limit the power and jurisdiction of the federal government, yep. impose fiscal restraints, and yep. place term limits on federal officials. When you say you want more federal government, what you're saying is that you want less responsibility for your life and you want less freedom. That's literally everything the federal government does is the threat of a gun. Everything that they do. That is the power that they have. Yes. So when you say you want them to run something, you are saying, I cannot manage it on my own. We're stupid, stupid, incapable, uh, regular citizens. The government official gods have to take care of it for us. And when you do that, you almost never get it back. So if they do a, a bang up job, it won't matter. They can do a worse job than you. It won't matter because now you've handed it over. You think we're going to just start, start uh, suddenly having private loans again because they feel like letting us do that for, for student loans? No. That's not how that's going to work. Um, the only time we get it back is if it fails completely and they can't do anything with it. The only time we get it back is with an Article 5 convention. That too. That's See that? Answer. That's good. That's I'm, trying, I'm trying to put a button in it. And you no buttons. Talking. No so, buttons. But luckily you're, you're doing not, it. You're, not, you're helping you're not me baby bring it back around. Baby doesn't go in a corner. To. Doesn't do that. Limiting. Yes. The power and jurisdiction gotta, of the federal limit. government. You gotta limit it. Imposing fiscal yeah. restraints, yeah, and placing term limits on federal and officials. The fact that they're not limited, there's a meme, the best meme ever. It's the libertarian meme I saw, and it said, 
if you're panicking about whoever is getting ready to be elected president, it's because the government has too much power. Amen. So that's it tonight. Uh, introduction to the Convention of States. Go to conventionofstates.com. Check it out. Sign the petition. Yeah. Um, uh, 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 I can't read that one out loud. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see you, dear. We see you, man. We see you. Um, anyway, thank you all for participating, for asking questions. Feel free to keep the conversation going. Like, share, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. The more yes. YouTube followers I get, the more stuff I can do. Yes. Um, there, everybody's going over to Parlor. I think I might check that out this week. I think is the that that's supposed about. to be like the Twitter. It's like a version of Twitter. I guess people are leaving Facebook and Twitter for Parlor. So I think it's like a. I don't know, man. We'll see. I don't know. I'm not going to be there exclusively. I'm going. I go where the people are. Because that's the point. The point isn't to be in the echo chamber. I mean, if you need, if you're talking because you want to have the liberty, well, to say we what don't you want to be. Say, we don't want to be in an echo chamber. We want liberals over correct. there too. We want all kind. I wouldn't. But I, I want leftists. I mean, I had Bernie Sanders. You guys, I had Bernie Sanders supporters who supported my campaign. So I'm not just. I'm a conservative, yeah. but that doesn't mean our values don't translate for other we people. We need to have conversations. And so. Um, we need to have conversations. And so I want everybody to move to Parlor. I want everybody to be on a platform where they're not censoring us. Yeah. So that's not why I'm moving. I'm moving, I and I can tell you guys, like, sincerely, that in the last couple weeks of the election, even though almost every video was boosted, paid for, I got significantly less reach. I got significantly less clicks, likes, shares, views. I had... I had ad campaigns that didn't even use up all the money. So I would boost a video for like 25 bucks or 35 bucks a pop or whatever. And somehow not every one of them got used. Interesting. But there's like, uh, there were like 100,000 voters or something, at least in Chittenden County. It's weird, Facebook. Really but weird. somehow you were only able to help me reach 300 people out of 300,000? Weird. So anyway, yeah, so I just don't want to be censored. Yeah, the thing is, I think a lot of people are going over there because of that. They're going over there thinking it's going to be the echo chamber, and we're saying, I wouldn't want to be there for the echo chamber. We I need, wouldn't we want need, that. We need to have conversation. Now, if everyone went there because it was Nonsense. more Wild West, great, but like, if it's just one side going to parlor, that, that kind of changes the point of this this well, is for comp to meet and show people and hey uh is it is it dion or dion how do i pronounce it spell it phonetically in the chats um don't let facebook chase us away i hear what you're saying but they have to suffer like money talks y'all yeah. like real talk and so all the boycott nonsense that the left has started doing we need to do it back like, I, I haven't had a Netflix subscription since when were the, the, the thing where uh, the Georgia passed the Hartley bill? Yeah. Was that what it was? I think it was. And Netflix was like, screw you, Georgia. We're going to just drop all of our filming there. We're just going to pull it all. And I was like, are you serious? This state has decided that it is choosing to protect life. And so you want to be a bully? Oh no no no! no. And force and force oh. them to change no, their check laws. This out. Check this out. So here's what's, here's what's amazing about that. A large amount of the black acting community is in Atlanta, Georgia. So when they pulled out for that, you affected how a lot of people in my industry of film and television eat. That's cute. Weird. I thought they cared about us. That just oh. I thought black people were like the, the golden stepchild that you so were trying to bring. So you don't forward. want corporate money in politics and you want abortion so badly that you don't care what the consequences are. Mm. No, it's more important that Hashtag Black Lives Matter. Not the not the ones that are in the womb. No, but here's the thing. Even outside of that, 
like the ones that are already alive and walking trying to eat and pay bills. Just trying to make a point. I got you. It's not it's just super So anyway, I canceled my Netflix subscription because of that. I was yeah. like, you guys are ridiculous. You don't get to bully to a bully state, state government into choosing its laws. I mean, they get to try. Are you sick? They're a company. We they, literally say that that stuff is disgusting. You shouldn't be allowed to do they're, that. They're a company. They get to do whatever they want to do. They get political if they want. And you know how you avoid letting corporate money affect your your state or your or your life? You <laughs> <laughs> you limit the power and jurisdiction of the federal <laughs> government. I don't know if that. Exactly. Correct, but, uh, hey, that, that was a good shot, Dion. Know. Dion, thank Dion. you, thank you for correcting me. Heard you have to give your driver's ID every time you post privacy. Really? Hmm. That's stupid. That can't be right. That's weird. Why? I'm gonna have to just sit and look at it. I'll figure it out. I don't know, but the point is. Let me know what else you guys, what other topics you guys want to hear. Um, as I mentioned earlier in the show, I'm putting together a, a series to talk about legalization of drugs. Um, you yeah. know, I really don't know where I stand on this. I've heard compelling arguments for legalizing drugs because it, you know, changes the dynamic of the legal stuff and, you know, Here's, blah, blah, blah. Every time they do anything like that, people find a way to be <sighs> trash. About, Stupid even if anyway. it does have a good intention, people do ridiculous things. So, and but the, but the <laughs> point is, like, I want to have the conversations. So I want to have a libertarian who can come on here with me and talk about the libertarian argument. Um, I'd like to have a prohibition person talk to me about it. I know there are some people who are anti-marijuana in, um, in, in Vermont and I could contact those people. I, and then I have the, like, there's the, the model in Portugal. So if somebody could speak yeah. to what it looks like to actually legalize drugs and what, we have all that. Here, right? Somewhere? Um, uh, who did it? Wisconsin or somebody? Somebody has it. Oregon? Seattle. Is it Oregon where is everything is fine now? Is it Oregon? I thought it was Oregon when they said that it's or, all, it's on decriminalized. So it's, it wasn't just a state, it was a whole state, it wasn't it a was city? A state. You're right, I can't remember, it might be I think Oregon. It's Oregon. I think you're right. I don't know actually. if it's legal, but I think it's decriminalized. decriminalized. So. Yeah. Like yeah. possession. It's yeah, de it's, I, don't know I if think it's an usually, or just the I think that's what I heard. Cross the board. So anyway, we're looking to have the, these kinds of conversations. You know, I don't necessarily just want to talk to people I, I agree with. I do want to talk to people who are reasonable and, and can have a conversation and who can justify yeah. their stance. Unlike our presidential election, where they kept the woman, Jorgensen, from even hitting the stage because they didn't want a diverse set of opinions on stage. Yeah, we can't have that. spectrum of ideas. Weird. We can't have that. Anyways. Spectrums of ideas are terrible. But you know who doesn't, or what would be necessary for that to not be terrible? Really? Tell me more. What do we need to do? Please interrupt. <laughs> okay, I did a really good job. Now I'm just being ridiculous. Have I heard of MeWe? No, what's that? that? What's MeWe? I've heard that before. Is that like I, us, MeWe? No. It's some other, I think it's another platform. There's a couple other platforms out there. Um, I'll probably be on them to see because I do it for work what's nine the, times out of ten. What's the one that Dave Rubin started? I don't remember. That's another That's one, That's a right? paid one, right? I don't know. There's a bunch of them. I haven't heard of Bailey, but I'll check it out. I think we should just take away the special rights of the stupid platforms so they can't do what they're doing anymore anyway really wrapping it up dave his is uh no that's not it Hold on. new free speech platform what the heck is it called locals, locals. that's right locals.com yeah. i've heard of that one i think that's the one that's subscription, subscription based so that way they don't have all the advertising nonsense i think so can we get famous like go viral who knows 
Okay, you guys, we need to go famous and be yeah. viral. We need to go eat. So viral to be famous. <laughs> We're gonna eat. I'm just gonna sit here and be awkward. Really? For the last couple just minutes. Just stare at them? Yep. Excuse me. Salud. Oh my goodness. I have violent sneezes. I'm just. Yeah, okay. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Come back next week. Uh, tune back into the events page to find uh, upcoming topics. Okay. Bye. Give us some suggestions. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, suggested topics, stuff you want to talk about. You're silly, honey. You're silly, honey. No, I'm not.